Let's move on to question number seven. Question number seven appears to be one of those questions that you never miss in paper one. It is under arithmetic progression. So question seven reads, the first three terms in an arithmetic progression are five, seven, and nine. Find the common difference. So how do you find the common difference? Common difference is found by second number minus the first number. The second number in this case is seven minus the second the second number is seven minus the first number which is five. So when you do seven minus five you get two as your final answer. So that is the common difference. You come to, to, to part B. Part B you are told to find the sum. You are told to find the sum of the first 12 terms. So in order for you to find the sum, you have to recall the formula for finding the sum, which is Sn, sum of terms, is equal to number of terms divided by 2. You open up 2a plus brackets n minus 1, open black, close brackets d, then you close up. So in this formula, n stands for number of terms. And as told in the question, we are told the number of terms is actually 12. Then A stands for the first term, which is actually 5, according to the sequence given. Then D is the common difference, which we've just found to be 2. So from here, we just compute, we evaluate this expression. 12 divided by 2, that is 6. 2 times 5, you get 10. 12 minus 1, you get 11. 11 by 2, that is 22. So 10 plus 22, you get 32. If you multiply 32 by 6, you get 192. So the sum of the first 12 terms is actually 192. As simple as drinking chihuahua. You come to question number 8. Question number 8, it is actually a probability question. It reads, in a game, the probability of a player losing is 0 0.3. What is the probability of a player winning? That is question number 8a. So we know that all probabilities, even if you can be given 100 probabilities, they need to add up to 1. So here we've been given two probabilities. We've, given, we've been given probability of winning and probability of losing. So probability of winning plus probability of losing, they have to add up to 1. Now, the probability of losing, we are told it is 0 0.3. What would be the probability of winning? We just form a simple equation. Probability of winning will be equal to 1 minus probability of losing. So 1 minus probability of losing, which is 0 0.3, you get 0 0.7 as the answer, which is the probability of winning. That's the final answer. We come to the B part of the question, which is which falls under coordinate geometry. The question reads, the coordinates of B and C are 2,5 and 4,3 respectively. If M is the midpoint of BC, what is the position vector of M? So we know that to find the midpoint, this is the formula that we use. x1 plus x2 divided by 2. You separate them with a comma. y1 plus y2 divided by 2. Then the coordinates we've been given. Coordinates of b is 2,5. Coordinates of c is 4, negative 3. So if this line, b and c, is a line, we want to find the midpoint, per cut, the midpoint of that line. That's what we want to find. And the midpoint of that line is found by this formula. So we just have to replace. This is actually our x1. This is our y1. That's our x2. This is our y2. So where there is x1, we put x1, 2. x2, that is 4. y1, 5. y2, negative 3. Then everything over 2, over 2, separated by a comma. So 2 plus 4, that is 6, divided by 2, comma. 5 minus 3, that is 2, divided by 2. 6 
divided by 2 is 3, 2 divided by 2 is 1. So 3 comma 1. And this, it is actually expressed in terms of the position vector. You can even put brackets like that. So that's the final answer. That is the position vector for the midpoint of those two points which are joined by a line. We come to the next question, which is question number nine. Question number nine is also under sets. You are given the union set there, one up to eight. Then you are given set A, one, two, three, four, and set B, two, three, four, five, six. Now you are taught to list A union B complement. So A union B complement, it means numbers which are not found in A and B collectively. Numbers which are not found in A and B collectively. That's A union B complement. So the thing that might help, you first have to combine A and B, list A and B. So A and B, you find these members, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So what is not in this set is what is A union B complement. So the only number which I'm missing from here, it is 7 and 8. Thus, 7 and 8 becomes A union B complement, and we express it as in our final answer like that. As simple as that. 9B, we find a scale drawing where you have to deal with huge numbers containing a lot of zeros. And bear in mind that paper one, we don't use a calculator. So you need to know how to work with these numbers with a lot of zeros under scale drawing. What have we been told with the question? The scale of a map is one to 20,000. The actual area of a residential plot is 60 kilometers squared. Calculate the area of residential plots on the map in square centimeters. This is the tip concerning scale drawing. What you need to know is that the number which is given to your left side, it is actually representing the map. Then the number given to your right hand side, it is actually representing the land or the actual the actual ground. That's what these numbers represent. So on the ground, where you have 20,000 on the map, it is actually represented as in one. So now this is what you are asked. What if on the ground you have 60 kilometers squared? What would be this number represented where? On your map. So once again, left hand side, map, right hand side, it represents ground or actual land. So 20,000, it is on the ground, but on the map, you can't have a line representing 20,000, which the map can be too big. So this 20,000 on a map, it is being represented by one. What of 60 kilometers squared on the ground? What will it be presented with on the map? That's what you're told to, to calculate. So you simply cross multiply. When you cross multiply, you have 20,000 by x, 20,000 x. 60 kilometers squared by 1, you have 60. You find, you solve for x, you divide, you find x to be 0 0.003 kilometers squared. Now, this 0 0.003, it is in kilometers squared. But the question there says that you leave your answer in square centimeters. So, you only have to do a simple conversion. You convert kilometer squared into centimeter squared. And this is the conversion factor. One kilometer squared is actually equal to 100,000 centimeters squared. So you just have to multiply 0 0.03 multiplied by 100,000, of which you are going to get 300 centimeters squared as your final answer. So tip on these questions is that your left hand side, the number on your left hand side represent the number on the map. Your right hand side represent the number on the actual ground. Let us move to the next question. Next question 
it's under earth geometry earth geometry under time for that matter so you are told the difference in longitude between town a and town b is 105 degrees b is west of a a family at a was watching a football match at 16 hours at what time did the family at b watch the same match so you you are already given the difference the difference in longitude you are told is 0 0.5 degree uh, 105 degrees so this is difference in longitude between town a and town b now we are not concerned with the difference in longitude between town a and town b no as we are concerned with the difference in time in hours between town a and town b so in order for us to convert this difference in longitude to convert it into time we have to divide by 15. So 105 divided by 15, we're getting 7. And this 7 is the time difference between town A and B, which is 7 hours. Yeah. Now, what are we going to do with this? Are we going to subtract from 16 hours or we are going to add from 16 hours? I've written to you, I've written for you the tip here. When you are going west, you subtract. Then when you are going east, you add. So where is town A? Town A, you are told it is found on the west of town B. So since it is on the west, going west, you subtract. We are going to subtract this 7 hours from 16 hours and we remain with 9 hours. We move on to question number 10B. So question number 10B, it is still under earth geometry. The distance between P and Q is... 3,600 in nautical miles. If an aeroplane flies from P to Q at 600 knots, how long will it take? So how long? How long? What are they asking about? Is this distance how long? No. How long? It refers to town. How long? It is time. Your mom might ask you, how long are you going to take where you are going? No, I'll just take four minutes. Okay, five minutes, yeah. So how long is time? So how long will it take? We are asked to find time. So the formula that connects time, distance, and speed, it's this formula. Speed is equal to distance over time. So what is the speed there? The speed there, we are being told that the speed is 600 knots. Then what is the distance? Distance is 3,600 nautical miles. And we are calculating what? time so for us to calculate time we do a simple cross multiplication time times 600 that's 600 t is equal to 3600 so our time that will be 3600 divided by 600 our time is six hours so that's how long it will take that's six hours let's move on to question number 11 